Hello, my grouts and gets. Welcome back to Happy Crump and War Gaming. Guys, I have been out of commission for about a full week, but I wasn't doing nothing. I was busy participating in the largest, most prolific, highest level, uh, skill level tournament in existence. It, it was the World Team Championship or the WTC. So, we got a bunch of freaking stuff to go through today, and I actually got a lot of really great material while I was out there, so you guys are going to be seeing some really good content coming up. We got a lot of amazing information to share with you guys, and I, I'm just, I'm freaking pumped to do it. And I'm really happy to get back to making some content and uh, bringing value to everyone. So, what's today's video? Because uh, we, we've got a, a, we've got a list of videos that are going to be coming out in the next week or two. So, first off, today I'm going to go ahead and kind of share my list with you. Uh, I'm going to go through the events. I'm going to share all my round videos. Uh, I'm going to speak about how the event operated. I'm going to uh, explain the mechanism of it and why every single top Warhammer player in the entire world basically was there. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about the takeaways. Um, the big list review, like how did my my list that I ended up taking to the tournament actually operate, all the fine details, that's a video unto itself, so we'll probably be putting that one out tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be talking about all the individual lessons that we learned in between the rounds. I'm going to be talking about that today, but we'll be doing some really specific deep dives probably on Friday for everyone so that you can get like maximum value of how you're really going to be improving your games based off of the lessons that I've learned. Um, so there's going to be a lot of really in-depth stuff coming up from just from lessons that we learned from this tournament. So first off, what is the WTC? It's the World Team Championship. Uh, basically, 40 different countries across the world sent their top eight players. Um, top eight players is, is relative. Some, sometimes some teams would have like a number 10 player because one of the people were available. Uh, every team selects, every country will select their team using different parameters. So, for example, I play for Team Norway. I'm American, just so everyone knows. <laughs> I'm American, but I live in Norway. My wife's Norwegian. We're having a child here in Norway. Yeah, can't wait to get that little man out. I'm pumped up to meet him. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so... Uh, I play on Team Norway, and I've got a bunch of really good friends here, and I'm, I'm pretty pumped up uh, for how we did this year, and I'm really excited to share it with you. But the way that we would select members for our team is it involves, first off, you have to be interested. Like, if you don't want to be on the team, then you know, you're know you not going to sign up for the team. <laughs> Second off, you have to be active. So you have to be active. You have to perform well. You don't have to win every tournament in Norway, but you do have to be performing consistently well. 3-2, 4-1 at tournaments is generally a must. That doesn't mean that you can't have one miss, but you do need to be performing well. You need to be uh, performing with the team. So that it means participating in TTS tournaments, things like this. Um, it also means that uh, if you're not participating in like team composition phone calls where you're hopping on, talking about how we're going to perform, et cetera, you're probably not going to be a member of the team as well. And then it comes down to a captain selection and then a vote from the selection committee. So every single team will have their own way. I know Team Italy, one of the ways that they do it, which is pretty interesting, they have a big tournament inside the country of Italy, and the winning team is the team that selects the members, and they're the ones who go to the WTC. So every country might have a little bit of a different selection process, but that's cool. So anyway, you have 40 teams. Uh, this year, we actually had eight brand new teams, which is sick. It was a huge expansion to the event. We had over, like, geez, what is the math on that? I don't know, just a bunch of players who showed up and were able to play at the, at the World Team Championship. Uh, every team would have coaches. So I know we had three coaches who flew with us to, to Mechelen, Belgium, and those coaches were essential because they were doing things like uh, actually helping to do the pairings process. So there's a pairings process at teams where you will select who actually has to play against who. So anyway, we have got eight members of each team. Each member of the team has to have a completely separate army. You can have no repeats. So if you are playing Chaos Space Marines and you also have Nurglings, you cannot take Chaos Demons. So you can't have repeats of armies. So, so you have to be really strategic about who's taking allies. And then there's a bracket system, and you just smash. So anyway, we had seven rounds. It was a super, super long week, and we did some really, really awesome things. So first things first, we met some freaking amazing people. So this first picture is just some of my teammates. We've got uh, Gaia, who's next to me, uh, not the the not girl. <laughs> uh, so he's he was our T-Suns player. He scored incredibly. In the back, we had two of our coaches. We got Alexander and Espen. They were awesome. And we have my lovely wife, who's next to me. She was along for the ride, and... Uh, that was awesome actually having her. And this other picture, we got two actual members of the Discord. It was really great meeting these guys. This is Will and Ian. So if you guys know, like the guy Ian, who um, is always talking shit on the Discord, that's him. That little love bucket right there. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm about to just go ahead and play a video because I had the entire uh, team trying to talk shit to him. And it was pretty hilarious. Basically because uh, he, he just deserves having shit talked to him. <laughs> we love him anyway. So I'm going to go and play that video now. Hey, Team China, do you have a message for Ian? 
Get Get Rexian! Rexian. From China. (laughs) From the Great East! All right. (laughs) So now you got that video in and uh, let's just do a few more pictures. This was just really cool getting to meet all like the members and everything. So we got uh, Richard. uh, You can see he's wearing a T-shirt making fun of Ian because my discord is awesome. And if you're not in there, you should jump in there. Uh, We got Adam. He was a coach for Team Scotland. Richard was playing for Team Slovakia. And then over here, this is a Viasard. He's one of the coaches for Team America. He's just a rock star. So it's super, super amazing people. And this was uh, actually a Team Norway altogether in a, in a photo. And uh, as you can see, I may have had one too many uh, 11% beers <laughs> because uh, they serve very high percent alcohol in Belgium. I don't drink much, but when I do, apparently I go shirtless. Anyway, <laughs> there were some sick ass models. And I'm just going to go through some of these things right before we get into the actual rounds. So there's some sweet models we got to see. This was a, a really cool conversion. They were using some Age of Sigmar materials to make like a Thunderwolf on Storm Wolf. And uh, so I thought that was a, that was a pretty cool one. Over here were two of my favorite models I saw at the entire tournament. This was done by a man named Kaba, and he was pl- the orc player for Team Bulgaria. And holy crap, how amazing do those guys look? Just freaking pirate orcs. They are beautiful. Uh, I might not like painting, but that does not mean I don't appreciate a hell of a paint job and a hell of a conversion job because that is absolutely incredible. So big shout out to him. Uh, he just did awesome. Also, big shout out to him because he was the only guy I heard screaming wah every single round. And you know what? We needed it. Thank you. You empowered me. And that was great. Uh, a couple other cool things. That was just a pretty sweet. Um, that was also from Kawa. He says it's not a Team America truck, but it looks pretty much like a Team America truck to me. Over here, this was a army that was made out of, there was a conversion for Chaos Knights. So this was a Knight Rampager that was made out of a Mega Gargant. And it is actually super, super sick. So this was done by Sammy, who's from Team Sweden. He's one of the coaches for Team Sweden. He was playing the Warmaster. Uh, so he, just awesome conversions. Just thought I'd share that with you guys. And then a few more sick models. Then I'm going to get into the actual armies itself. Okay, so uh, right here, we've got two badass Stompas. This is some Chad who was running at the Warmaster. Uh, he ran double Stompa. And you know what? He won some. <laughs> and uh, good for him, man. Because uh, anyone who's Chadly enough to drop double Stompa on those tables is awesome, man. And we have the notorious seven demon, greater demon list that was uh, played by our friend in Malta. And you know what? This was uh, from Team Malta. You had their 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 demon player. He brought seven de- he brought seven greater demons. And I did a list review of this list. And I was like, you know what? That list is bad. And after talking to him at the event and seeing how we performed between the WTC and the Warmaster, I will officially say the list is still bad. But that guy, damn it, dude, I don't have your name in front of me. Um, I'll see if I can find it. But he is a heck of a player because he ran this list to actually pretty damn impressive results. And you know what, man? My my hat is off. I, I'm, I don't actually need to just flash my bald skull in front of everyone. But you actually played amazingly. So I'm really impressed with the way that you did pilot this. I still think the list is bad. But you definitely showed me that a skilled hand can take a fairly bad list and perform really well with it. So well done, my friend. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, let me go ahead and give a quick rundown of the Blood Angels army that I took. So I took. And, and, and like I said, I'll do a full breakdown of how it actually operates tomorrow. But I was taking a, a list that had three death blobs. So my list was effectively, I took Commander Dante, and he was with a Sanguinary Priest, and they were leading a unit of Vanguard veterans. And then I had a Captain with Jump Pack, with another Sanguinary Priest, leading a 10-man squad of Jump Assault intercept, uh, jump Pack Intercessors, or JPI. I had two five-man of JPI, and then I had a Lamartes leading a 10-man of death company with jump packs then i followed it up with two units of scouts one ball predator a death company dread and you know what the oh and sanguinor of course because you have to have a sanguinor and the calidus and the list was freaking awesome i have no regrets um it was a complete rock star i'm actually really excited to dive into all the details of it but we'll, we'll get that video put out tomorrow for you um it was what was really funny is listening to some of the other teams like who were reviewing some other ar- other armies and people were clearly did not understand how my army worked <laughs> they were talking about how it was bad it wasn't going to function and they were very wrong and i'm actually really excited to go through how my list performed the way that it did so let me go ahead and i'm just going to go and play a video right now because i took some video there and once i'm done with that uh it should be a few minutes uh then we'll be right back and i am going to go ahead and show all of the scores for the total rounds and i'll talk a little bit about how everything performed each round etc so check this out and we are here for round one of the WTC. I have my lovely Blood Angels all arrayed against the Grey Knights. This is Supply Drop, and my opponent has actually drawn the first card. This is my opponent, Ricard. Ricard? Nice to meet you, Hello, guys. we're best friends. 
Oh, yes, best friend. Before <laughs> and we were about to have an amazing game, so you're going first in supply drop. I'm very happy about that. You know, I love you, but, you know, <laughs> I'm happy about I'm that. very happy. And we're going to see how this goes, so we'll be back at the end of the game with a little catch-up. And that is going to be the end of the game. The Blood Angels will win with the lowest score in history. <laughs> it was a 41-32 to 32 game. Ricardo was an awesome player. He capitalizes on some mistakes that I made, and he wrecked oh. me with them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think it went both ways a little bit. That was, I'm sweaty, and it was only one game today. So, uh, great game, buddy. Thank you, mate. Great game, too. Cheers. Okay. Okay, so we are at round number two against Australia. This is Josh. Say hi, Josh. Yeah, I'm Gus. All right, so we have the Blood Angels arrayed against the Canoptic Court. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, this is going to be on Fog of War tipping point, and I am going first as the Blood Angels. And uh, Josh, you ready to do this? Yeah. All right, baby, let's have a good one. Cheers. All right, so that is going to be the end of the game. So I did end up with the taking the Blood Angels win. Josh was an awesome freaking opponent. Uh, that was a nail better. I'm covered in sweat. He's covered in sweat. The final score is going to be a 71 to the Blood Angels to a 56 for the Canopsic Court. So it is going to be a 12-8 win. Um, I don't think we did too well in the rest of the round, but Josh played a valiant game, bro. It was awesome. Good job. Good job. All right, cheers. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be back. All right, happy cruppers. So we're back. This is actually not the start of game number three, but it is in game number three. We're hanging out with Adam. Say hi, Adam. Hi. <laughs> so Adam's awesome. He's a subscriber. He's a rock star. We love him. So he's got his Vanguard Nids and my Blood Angels. It's on Purge the Foe, Smoke and Mirrors, and Tipping Point. Um, you can see here really exciting things are happening in the background. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he went first. I went second. This is the top of turn two. He's about to make some charges, and I'm going to see if I can get some heroics. Uh, we'll be back at the end of the game with an update. So... Best of luck, baby. And we are at the end of round three against Malta. So Adam fought a long, hard game, and uh, he actually did a great job. So going into this, we knew this was actually kind of a rough matchup for him, but he fought and he actually earned his team a lot of points. The final was uh, 95 to the Blood Angels to 58 for the Tyranny of Vanguard Onslaught. Um, he actually ended up grabbing quite a few points with a really good interrupt at one point. So I think we're going to go over some, uh, some things that maybe we can do to get better in the next round. But... This is it. So we are going to take the round, the round win for Team Norway this round, and uh, we'll be back with more. All right, and we're here for round four against South Africa. What's up, Leon? Hey, guys. So he is running the World Eaters, and it's going to be a smash fest. World Eaters into Blood Angels. It's a mirror match. Pretty thrilled. He's just finishing his deployment up right now. Uh, yeah, man, we're going to smash some faces. We're going to have a great game. I've got all my dudes arrayed kind of safely, but kind of not safely because I, uh, I don't know. We're ready to smash. And uh, game on, man. Have a great one. Good, sir. Okay, so occasionally at Lehan, what happens is you play Warhammer and you get the shit kicked out of you. <laughs> so Lehan crushed my soul, ended my uh, undefeated at the WTC this year. <laughs> yeah, the final score was going to be 81 to the Blood Angels to 54 to the, or I'm sorry, 81 to the World Eaters. I just said Blood Eaters, I think. And then 54 to the Blood Angels. So as you can see, there's lots of things that are called World Eaters that are alive on the table. And there is one unit that are Blood Angels that are alive on the table. So effectively, he neutered me, and I think he did his team a really huge favor here. Um, and I'm really, really happy for him. He played a great game. I made an error, and he capitalized on it beautifully. And, uh, dude, well done. Congratulations. Thanks, Cheers, guys. For what it's worth, you were legitimately my most fun game at the tournament so far. And, like, oh, cool. I played Vic, so that's, like... You know, oh, that's nice awesome, game. man. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot, man. It was great. All right, man. I'm going to try to take out my frustrations on my next round. <laughs> All right. So this is battle round number, what, five now? Five. Jeez. Yeah, five. So I'm playing Luis from Mexico. Luis, say hello. Hi. Hi, my friends. All right. So we have the Thousand Sons, the Magic Box Sticks, getting ready to tear into the Blood Angels. Uh, I'm terrified... T sons are huge dicks. I don't like them, but Luis is a gentleman and a scholar, even though I'm going to talk mad shit to him. Uh, so, this is going to be hidden supplies, take and hold. Let's crush. Game on, baby. Best of luck to you. Same, my friend. Cheers. Luis, congratulations, my friend. Thank you, my friend. You smashed it. All right, so basically, this is T sons into Blood Angels. Uh, we both had the matrix effectively the same. Um, he had it as a 15-5, I had it as a 15-5. <laughs> I ended up getting one bonus point, so it's going to be 85-62, which is going to end up as a 21-25 uh, point difference, which is a 14-6. to six. So, I'm happy with an overperformance. Not yes. super happy, but happy. Luis was an awesome freaking opponent. As you can see, all of these nerds are alive. The team sounds rock. Say hello. Hello. Viva la Jimeo, Hey, Hello. 
And then uh, all the Blood Angels are freaking dead. So, what well on, Luis? You smashed it. Thank you, my friend. Hopefully, the rest of your team didn't smash us. <laughs> I want you guys to enjoy that. So, anyway, this is a great game. Yeah. Super happy to have you guys here at the WC. And we'll catch up later, guys. All right, I'm here with Mr. Martin from Team Northern Ireland. What a Chad. What's going on? Uh, we have, uh, once again, kind of a mirror match. All my Blood Angels against the Accursed Cultist Swarm. I went first. This is actually the bottom of turn two. Uh, we're both sweating right now because I took some big risk and it kind of paid off. My DC Dredge just killed like four units in turn. <laughs> he went and popped off like a Chad. <laughs> um, but he did hit me back hard. So this this turn, turn two, basically determines the game. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Best of luck. Yeah. Best of luck to me. Luck. Love you. All right, and we finished up. This was a freaking barn burner, guys. Um, it did end up 9-11. Uh, so Martin takes the win. Bro, going, that was, I'm sweating like crap. And, um, that lucky, that lucky, I must admit. I thought um, I had you smashed in round two. I had no idea you could recover from that. And uh, it was, it was sore. you worked a hell of a game to get that back. Uh, Super tight. Everything's dead, but uh, <laughs> there was a heck of a game. Secret missions coming in clutch. I need a beer. Yeah. Great game. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. So this is my final round of the WTC, game number seven, Scorched Earth, Crucible of Battle. We're playing against Razvan from Team Romania. He's a gentleman and a scholar. It is finally Blood Angels into Blood Angels. Uh, we're actually pretty similar list. And uh, this is going to be just deadly, I'm sure. So we will see how it goes. And we'll be back at the end. Razvan, best of luck, sir. And so for the end of the game, after a bloody, bloody matchup, we ended 148 to the Blood Angels. It was my Blood Angels, thank goodness. But as I really appreciate the game. Thanks so much for your time, man. Um, there's one rapid ingress that just saved the entire world in this match. It looks like we might end up taking the round win, which will bump Norway up to a C2 team for next year. Uh, we'll be back to confirm that. But yeah, happy WTC, everybody. Cheers. Okay, so we're back. And uh, basically, this is the rounds that we totally had for the entire tournament. And it was pretty awesome. So here we go. Round one was 48 to 112 to Italy. So we completely lost. Now, I played Ricardo. You guys saw him in the, in the video there. And Ricardo was a rock star. Super enjoyed playing him. Um, and I ended up scoring 11, uh, 11 to 9. Uh, so if you guys don't know team scores, team scores are done off of like differential. So for every five points of differential you get in the total score, you get one game point. So if I won 11, 9, that means by I won by anywhere between 6 and 11 points, right? Or 6 and 10 points. All right. So I, I won the first round, but we got smashed by Italy. We're not super happy with the score. There were some um, there were some details in, involved. My personal performance in this game was I I I did not play well. Um, this was our first round. I think we made a big mistake because the round didn't start until about five in the afternoon, and we showed up to the event at noon, and we sat around for five hours and just sweated. And I I think that was an error. We probably should have showed up till around three. Now, this was on, I believe, this, yeah, this was the supply drop. I had every advantage here. I went second into a matchup that I'm already really good into. I do know that Ricardo absolutely baited me into tagging some of his models, and I really wasn't considering how good Grey Knight characters are at sniping out four win characters. So he was able to pull off a precision move twice on me, and that's something I'm going to have to pay attention to in the future as, as I'm playing. But yeah, I just I, I didn't perform well here. I should have had a, about maybe a 15-point score, um, which would have been a 25 points or more victory. Uh, so I, I, I definitely didn't perform as best as I could there, even though it was a little bit of a win for me. It was a loss for the team, a little bit of a win for me, but wins for me are irrelevant in teams. In teams, it's about how do you get the round win. Second round, we went into Australia. Australia was awesome. Those guys were total rock stars. Everyone had a great game. I played Josh. You guys saw him in the video with Canopic Court. Uh, so in my matrix, I had that discussed as a 15-5 win, which is a good, solid win. Now, Josh actually played that a beautifully round. Um, I don't feel bad about the way I performed at all. I performed pretty much perfectly. Josh just, he knew that he was going to lose that game. So what he was doing is he was trying to save his team points. And he actually did a really damn good job of saving his team points. So he played very reserved. He played to try to decrease how many points I scored versus scoring himself more points. He didn't try to win. He just tried to decrease by how much I was able to win. So he blunted me. So it wasn't a factor of how I played. He just played really well. So I'm proud of him. He did a great job. Um, I did have one opportunity where I could have really drove it. I had a seven-inch rerollable charge, which I failed. And you know what? 
that happened, but I still played it correctly. So I, there's no reason getting mad at dice if you play it correctly. And uh, Josh did a, did a great job bunching me there. And Australia took the round, took the round loss. on still, still a win for me. Then in round three, we played against Malta. You guys saw Adam there. He's actually a member of the Discord. You guys should give him a holler in the Discord. He's a rock star. I absolutely love playing him. So Adam was, uh, he was running his Vanguard Invader get nids against my Blood Angels. Now, I have a really interesting conversation I want to have about that that I think I might do tomorrow when I'm going through the list review. But I actually think Vanguard Invader nids are really good into Blood Angels, even though the stats say the opposite. And I've got a lot of thoughts on that, and I'll, I'll go over that tomorrow. And then we played into South Africa. So Lehan, um, this was an example. All right, so this is an example where a lot of people would probably complain about getting dice. So I got five points into the 15 for the World Eaters. It was, we had predicted that it would be the opposite. We had predicted that I was going to get 15 to his five. Now, there was a time where my entire Death Company squad with Lamartes went into Angron, and Angron survived pretty easily. Like, he just didn't take any damage. Now, some people would consider that being diced. I am not going to claim I got diced, or I just rolled really badly, and that's why I lost. I believe that what happened is I didn't set up a secondary game plan. And because I didn't set up a secondary game plan, that bad dice rolling proved to be catastrophic for me. So this was actually... A perfect example of how you shouldn't, I don't think that you should blame dice. Had I had another unit in position to make sure that they could also cause catastrophic damage in that phase, then it wouldn't have mattered that I whiffed into Angron. So that was a player error that because I put my all of my eggs in one basket and I didn't really like spread my forces in the correct positions, I allowed myself to get punished by bad dice. So that was a player error, and then Leon did an amazing job of just capitalizing on my error, and he got his team a huge score. And because he did that, South Africa made a draw against us. Had we had the score that it probably should have been, had I not had I played more intelligently, and um, then we would definitely have gotten the round win. So great job to Leon. He absolutely capitalized on the errors of positioning that I had, and when I did have bad dice rolls, he pounced. And that's what a good player does. Sometimes you're in a bad situation, and what you have to do is you have to hope for your opponent to roll bad. But you have to be able to take advantage of a bad dice roll, which he did marvelously. So I'm really, I think he did a great job, and it was awesome. Round five, we played into Team Mexico. I played against Mr. Luis, and holy crap. Team Mexico, this was their very first year of the WTC, and they were so much better than anyone expected. As a matter of fact, when I was playing into T-Suns, the way I look at Blood Angels and T-Suns is pretty simple. If T-Suns make a mistake, Blood Angels will win, or Blood Angels can win. If T-Suns don't make a mistake, Blood Angels have zero chance of winning. Luis played a perfect game, made zero errors. <laughs> I, <laughs> I will say just real fast that um, I'm a little frustrated because I, I, I was losing this game. As, as predicted, I knew I was going to get five points. I knew he was probably going to win by like 25 individual points. So I was going to get a five. He was going to get 15. That was, that was on Matrix. I was supposed to lose this game. We knew it. And my, and my coach walks up to me in the middle of the game and says, Jonathan, I need you. I need you to get me an extra point if you can. So I say, yes, sir. I am going to get you another freaking point. And the crap I did to get my team another point. Woo, man. The moves I pulled off. At one point in time, I, I put in a big blob and I was able to kill. And via all my pylons and my six-inch consolidation, I was able to tag five separate units with one blob in order to mute his last turn. And you know what? I got my extra point. I got my six points in that round and it didn't freaking matter because another person on my team got a 20 that we weren't expecting. So we ended up with a round win. <laughs> and it was awesome, man. It was great. Luis, Luis had a, Luis to play a great, great game. It was, it was just really funny where I went through that and I just ended up not not needing it so anyway it was it was, it was it was pretty funny so anyway great job for Luis. he actually smashed me and it turns out that he was the national champion he took that list to the wtcw last year and man it showed he was just damn good no mistakes okay so then the next round that we went into was northern ireland and i need to pause for a moment here and i need to highlight something about sportsmanship at the wtc sportsmanship is required it's not even like encouraged like you have to have good sportsmanship now I was playing against Martin. You guys saw him in the video. And this man is the paragon of sportsmanship. So during our game, a couple things happened. First off, it was a blast. Like we had melee smashing into melee. And I did not understand the way that his army worked. 
and he really didn't quite understand the way parts of my army work. He understood Blood Angels at a pretty well, at a pretty high level, because he had he had practiced the matchup a lot. But there were a few things like he had never seen the DC Dread pop off before, so there were there were a few things that we had to like kind of explain to each other. So at the beginning of the game, I, I went ahead and told him, I was like, dude, I don't know how your army works. I've never played this matchup before. I just, would you mind just tell me your army?" And he did a very good and elaborate job of it. Uh, he just did a fantastic job of it. So as we played, I ended up with the nine points to his 11 points. My matrix was blue. That was based off of my prediction, not really knowing it, but just, just seeing what his units did and just assuming this was going to happen. I completely underestimated how tough those ACDC units were. And ACDC guys would be a cursed cultist with the uh, oh, DC. It's a character. Demifuge, cultist, wh whatever it's called. I, I can't remember the name of the character right now. Sorry. Anyway. So those blobs are so much tougher than I was expecting. Well, anyway, it took both Martin and I a very long time to play this game, and we were both pretty close to clocking out. And at the WTC, it's actually a yellow card if you clock out because <laughs> you have to manage your clocks well. So what we did is we agreed to a gentlemanly talking out of how things were going to go. We were going to draw our cards. We were going to move our models into positions where it needed to be move, move, where it needed to be moved, but we would talk things out. And I get very nervous whenever someone asks this of me, because inevitably what happens when you're when you agree to a gentlemanly game at a high level tournament, uh, you're going to agree on everything until it actually matters. And then someone's going to become a dick about it. And can I tell you, Martin was unbelievably fair and I absolutely returned the favor. And so we were absolutely able to to talk out what was going to occur for the rest of the game. I personally, I disagreed with him on one point. And when we disagreed, no problem, we rolled it out. He disagreed with me on one point. When we disagreed, no problem, we rolled it out. But the cords that were drawn, that were clear that they were going to be scored, no problem. We had a great way of talking out to make sure that we didn't run out of time and didn't penalize both of our teams. And I, I just got to say my hat's off to you, Martin, because you you were you were absolutely fair the entire time. You never got salty about anything. And it was just it was a really, really fun and gentlemanly experience to play with you. And he saved his freaking team. Had I gotten a 10 instead of a 9 in that matchup, we would have won the round and not drawn. And Martin, you just, you did a great job. And I learned a valuable lesson about the way that this style of army works. So I'm going to be able to predict that in the matrix better. I did not underperform here at all. As a matter of fact, when we, when, bleh, when we reviewed the game, uh, Martin had prepared for this matchup like 20 times. <laughs> and in his experience, he goes, yes, if the Blood Angels player goes second here, I lose. If the Blood Angels player goes first, I draw or maybe get a small win. And that's exactly what happened. So it wasn't that. So I, I did not underperform. I don't have any bad feelings about that. My our matrix as a team was incorrect due to our ignorance into how this matchup in particular worked. I do want to give a big shout out to my death company Dreadnought because this badass in this matchup, he popped off. He made a seven. Inch, well, he made a nine inch charge, but he's plus two inches to charge against monsters and vehicles from strat reserve. He charged a rhino and a unit possessed. Killed the possess. The rhino had to punch my dreadnought. My dreadnought then killed the rhino. I piled it into his first unit, into one of the two units of legionnaires that dropped out. Killed the first unit. Piled into the next one. Killed over half of it, and then he slowed down. So that DC dread is a total legend. And he actually really screwed Martin up and actually stole a lot of points from him. So the DC dread did this in multiple games. I'll talk more about that in later. But this was just a it was it was really cool. Anyway, then lastly we went into the very last round of the tournament. And it was Romania, and Romania was awesome. I played against Razvan. You saw him in the video. Uh, basically, I had this down as a draw because while I don't, I do not think Dante with a ten-man unit of Sanguard is good. It is actually quite good in the mirror. But I was able to outmaneuver. I forced him into a bad position where he had to rapid ingress somewhere he did not want to rapid ingress. And then I also was able to uh, do a really good heroic intervention, which totally screwed up his plans. So because of those things, I was able to get the 20 Uh We had a great match. I really enjoyed playing him. Um, he was a super good sport about the game. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And we had, and did end up taking the win against Romania. This put us in 17th place for Norway. And this was the best result that we have ever had in Team Norway. So we are absolutely thrilled with it. We are very, very pleased. There were some levels of failure that we as a team um, did not account for, which could have easily put us uh, up even higher. But I do believe that this was a fairly honest showing, and I'm actually quite proud of it. And we have learned a lot of lessons that I'm going to share with you later this week that is absolutely going to be able to teach you 
how all of this uh, shook out. So it was really, really good. It was a great experience. All these guys were awesome. I'm really pumped up to be sharing some more specific examples with you later this week. Until then, my friends, I'm going to leave you with this amazing journey. I'm just going to put it on this picture of this sick-ass orc while I finish talking here again. Uh, WC was a rock star. Shout out to all the organizers, all the other opponents. Uh, we, we just had a total blast with it. Anyway, I'm going to sign off for now, and I hope all of you enjoy your happy crumpin'. And I'll be back tomorrow giving a super in-depth analysis of the way that my Blood Angels list works so that you can see how it will work for you. Cheers.